know that they are going to be ready for us. We haven't played nearly the uh, schedule and the competition, certainly, that they've played, but our players are anxious to play. Uh, they'll give everything they got, and we look forward to the challenge here today against Notre Dame. Doug Black, their outstanding fullback, as a plebe, was told you're too small to be a fullback and you're too slow to play linebacker. Well, all he's done is, is <laughs> rush for 100 yards last week against Boston College. He will get try to get that tough inside yardage against that Notre Dame defense. He has not lost a yard all year, and he is led by a great offensive guard, Don Smith. Well, he's an All-American candidate, also a Rhodes Scholar candidate, big offensive lineman that really comes off the football very low and gets into defensive line. Now the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame are about to come out of the tunnel, led by the leprechaun and head coach Jerry Faust. Notre Dame off to a slow start, one and three, but they have really dominated Army in the series, having won nine in a row, including six shutouts. Jerry Faust, the head coach of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, and we asked Coach Faust about playing Army. We're excited about playing Army today, and uh, it's a big game for us And uh, because they're 20th ranked in the country, or 19th ranked, and undefeated 5-0, and, oh, and we have to get back on the winning side, and this would be a great way for us to get back and get uh, things going the way we want it, and a victory over Army today would be a great victory. And it could well be a record-setting day for Alan Pinkett, who's trying to become the all-time leading rusher in Notre Dame history. Outstanding running back in their offense today. They're going to try to get the football in the open field to Alan Pinkett on screen passes, on delays, on swing out of the backfield. He, when he's in open field, he's very difficult to bring down one-on-one. -on -one. Defensively, they must stop Army's awesome wishbone, and the key is Pat Ballage. Pat Ballage, along with Steve Lawrence, the other safety, they are concerned with containing that option to the outside. They got Army got outside of Boston College a number of times last week. The two safeties will have to contain it. In just a moment, we're going down to the field and meet the captains. We'll be right back. Hi, coin at midfield, and both teams are bringing their entire squad out to midfield for the toss of the coin. Let's pick up the official for the toss. Here's your opponent, Captain Pinkett, Captain Larkin, Captain Ferdinick, Captain Scannell, the other officials, boys, Mr. Flagus. Mr. Klingensmith, Mr. Daniels, Mr. Lorenzo, Mr. Sells. There's the coin. There's the head. There's the tail. We're going to throw it up. If I miss it, we'll throw it again. Yell it in the air. Loud. Hit it. Toss a head. It's a tail. You've won the toss. They're deferring. Hold on. You get the choice now to be their choice for second half. You want the ball. They want the ball. Which way do you want to go? Like spin, the north spin, spin around this way. So as you heard, Notre Dame won the toss but deferred to take the second half option and Navy will receive. Notre Dame will defend the north goal and Navy will defend the south goal. Notre Dame will be kicking off. We had rains all of yesterday. The field, however, was covered and should be fairly dry and fairly fast. The field has been covered until game time, and if the rains hold off, it's a dark and overcast day, but so far, not a whole lot of rain today. Temperature is 58 degrees. The wind shouldn't be too much of a factor. Craig Stopa, the fine kicker for Army, was kicking him 52 yards in pregame practice. And Harry, this is the first time that Army's going to play on natural grass this season. They've played all their games on artificial turf. The last time they played on natural grass was last year against Montana, and they had 600 yards rushing. A band of cadets here, Army 5-0, their best start since 1950 in the Earl Red Blake years. And well, there's a lot of enthusiasm about Army football in 1985. John Carney will kick off for Notre Dame. Brandy Wells is a key man on the special teams. He is a special teams captain. He gets down on kickoffs in a hurry, number five. The deep men for 
Army will be Clarence Jones, number 40. And that's William Lampley, number 20. John Carney. And we're underway. Notre Dame and Army. Carney gets it deep into the end zone. Fielded by Jones. He'll not bring it out. And it'll be first and 10 Army. They'll have the ball at their own 20-yard line. The Cadets first and ten with their sophomore quarterback, Torrey Crawford, 5'10", 175 pounder out of Houston, Texas, coming off a big game against Boston College. Offensive line averages 246 per man. From the wishbone, Crawford keeps oh, up to about the 24 before he's brought down by Tony Perjanic. Defensively for Notre Dame, they use three down linemen, and they're missing Wally Klein. Wally Klein will be out for several weeks. He had arthroscopic surgery. Mike Kiernan filling in a nose tackle, and Eric Dorsey moving over to a left tackle. The linebackers and the defense's secondary. It'll be a second down and six call for Army. They have it at their own 24-yard line. Crawford calling the signal. On the option play, pitches back, a fumble. A big pile up at the 16-yard line. Notre Dame recovers. Harry Crawford came down the line, pitched the football out at the last minute, was a little tentative on the, on the pitch. We look at it right now. Here's Crawford faking the black, coming right down the line of scrimmage, pitching out to Lampley. The, the ball was a little bit high, but a catchable pitch. He dropped the football, and they don't turn the football over very often. Steve Lawrence recovered. That's only the fifth fumble they've lost in this, their sixth game. First and ten, Notre Dame, an early opportunity for the Fighting Irish. Steve Berline, the quarterback, calls signals. Stams and Pinkett, the running backs. Pinkett is nailed for a loss on the play. A fine defensive play by Jim Brock, the nose tackle. Notre Dame's offense with Burline, the quarterback. Stams and Pinkett are the running backs. Reggie Ward and Tim Brown back in action. Brown missed the Air Force game. The offensive line averaging 265 per man. It's a second down and 15 for Notre Dame. Burline calls signal. Looking to throw, has a man open, Alvin Miller inside the 10, fights to the four-yard line, first and goal, Notre Dame. He was finally stopped by Kurt Gutierrez. Harry Berlin just rolled out away from containment, got outside that Army defensive line, and just hit Miller in the flat. He broke a tackle and then took it inside the five-yard line. Alvin Miller, a 6'4", 211-pound junior from Kirkwood, Missouri. First and goal. Now they go to the power eye with an extra fullback, Tom Mana Monahan. First down and goal at the four. Pinkett gets, no, it's a handoff up the middle and absolutely nothing there. A handoff to Monahan, the 5'10", 210-pounder. And he was stopped in his tracks at second and goal. And this is where Notre Dame has had problems as we look at the Army Cadets defensive line. Linebackers, Dave Shire is their leading tackler, number 90. In the secondary, all seniors, so they have experience. Second down and goal for Notre Dame at the Army four-yard line. Inside handoff again. And again, it's Monahan, and he gets about two down to the two-yard line before he is stacked up by the whole middle of the Army defense, and on the bottom of the pile, their fine nose guard, Jim Brock, a junior from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Harry, Jerry Faust has been criticized for getting down in close, playing a lot of different types of plays rather than going right at the defense. Right now, it's just power football, taking it inside the two-yard line with that big offensive line of Notre Dame. It'll be third down and goal to go from the two-yard line. Ron plants over the ball. Burline calls signals. Alan Pinkett. Pinkett fights to the goal line, and he stops short of a touchdown. Pinkett at about the one-foot line, so Jerry Faust has an early decision. Dave Shire made the tackle. 
great linebacker, number, number 90, Dave Shire, looking at him come right down the line of scrimmage, getting help with, uh, by Thompson, and that gang tackling by the Army defense would not let Pinkett, who's a very strong running back, stopped him about a half a yard short of the touchdown. They are going to go for it on fourth down and goal to go from the one-foot line. Burline calls the signal. Handoff, touchdown, Monahan. Tom Monahan pulls his way off right guard, Sean Heffern and Mike Perino opening the hole, and Notre Dame has scored early here at Notre Dame Stadium. And they just really took it right to that Army defensive line. They're much bigger, straight ahead blocking, just power football down here, and they just pushed it in the end zone on fourth down. That was Pernell Taylor. That was not Monahan. Pernell Taylor, the third team fullback, scoring the touchdown. Number 46, a junior from La Fuente, California. Now the conversion attempt by John Carney. It's up, and it is good. And Notre Dame has a 7-0 lead with 11.36 left to play in the first quarter. The score, Notre Dame 7, Army nothing. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium in just a moment. This is a beer that's everything a fine imported beer ought to be. It's brewed with all natural ingredients, the way fine imported beers are brewed. Bottled in tall green glass, the way fine imported beers are bottled. This is Rolling Rock. Rolling Rock turnover by Army. It was, it was great for Notre Dame's offense. Once they got the football after the turnover in good field position, they did not settle for the field goal. They punched it in for the touchdown. That can give a lot of confidence to that offense. When Notre Dame scores first, as you see, 18-8-1. So they are on the board first, leading 7-0. When the opponents score first, the Irish are 8-15. Well, they converted the turnover into a touchdown. John Carney will kick off. And the deep men, once again, for Army. Our Lampley and Jones, and Carney kicks it way out of the end zone. Last year, they would have put the ball in play at the 30-yard line, but they changed that rule. It will be brought back out to the 20, where Army will have it first and 10 at their own 20. Took Notre Dame six plays to go 16 yards. Pernell Taylor taking it in. Pernell Taylor was the super heavyweight boxing champion here at Notre Dame. He beat tight end Tom Raider in the finals. First and 10 Army, they have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Pitch back, going to William Lampley, and he has plenty of running room. Knocked out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Knocked out by Brandy Wells. That's exactly the same play they fumbled on earlier in the first series. That time they got to the outside, and finally Wells had to come over and make the play. Wells doesn't make that tackle. He's gone for a touchdown. Scott Spellman comes wide to the left on a first down and 10 at their own 31-yard line. Army trailing 7-0. There's Black, and he pulls his way up the middle for about five yards to the 36-yard line. Ron Weisenhofer finally making the stop for Notre Dame. Scott Black is a rugged fullback. He's going to get that tough yard inside. An offensive line from Army coming off very low, trying to neutralize that big defensive line of Notre Dame. Benny White is wide to the left on a second down and four call. Corey Crawford keeps it and he's close to a first down at the 41-yard line before he was brought down by Robert Banks along with Tony Ferjanic. Enough for the first down in his first and ten army. They have it at their own 41. They run three consecutive plays to that side. I would not be surprised if they try some sort of reverse back to the other side with that pursuit of that Notre Dame defense. Torrey Crawford, the sophomore quarterback, calls the signals, pitches back, and Lampley slips trying to make a cut. Right there on top of him was Troy Wilson from his cornerback, and it'll be a loss of a couple of yards on the play by William Lampley. And linebacker Robert Banks got penetration into the backfield. You got to penetrate against that triple option. Made Crawford uh, throw the football back immediately, and they stopped him for about a yard loss. Second down and 12 for Army. 
Rolling out is Crawford, looking upfield. He throws one, and it's caught. A great catch by Rob Dickerson in Notre Dame territory at the 44-yard line. He was stopped by Brandy Wells. It's a very difficult play rolling out to your left. Quarterback right now being right-handed. Good fake by Crawford. Rob Dickerson has good, been covered downfield, but he delivers a bullet downfield right before Wells can get there to break it up. They don't throw the ball very often, but it worked right there. First and 10 Army. They have it at the 44-yard line of Notre Dame. Crawford. He, he was smothered by Cedric Figaro, among others. Cedric Figaro was right there on top of him, along with Eric Dorsey. I think Notre Dame's coming in with the idea they're going to bang that quarterback around, make him carry the football. That time they stopped Crawford, two or three defensive linemen, but Figaro, really the linebacker, who got the penetration and made the play on Crawford. Loss of one, it'll be second down, 11 for Army at the Notre Dame 45-yard line. Corey Crawford, sophomore quarterback from Houston, Texas. Rolling out on the option play, pitches back to Lampley, and Lampley had nowhere to go. Pat Ballage was right there to stop him as Clarence Jones missed the block on number 40, Pat Ballage. Another loss of about four on the play. I think Army's concerned about this natural grass right now. Pitches back here to Lampley. They're one guy plays off the ball, but Lampley really flips down on the natural grass service. Try to cut back, could not do it, and really fell down on his own. Third down and 15 Army. They don't pass much, and they're not going to hear a draw play to Lampley, and he draws nothing but Notre Dame tacklers. Tony for Janet get on the bottom of the pile. No game. Fourth down, and the putting situation is on. I really believe Army's going to have a hard time. That, that field out there is a little bit wet, and they've got into second down and long and third down and long situations, and that's not the way you want to run that triple option. Harold Rambush does the punting, averaging 35 and one-tenth yards per putt. He's a freshman, and he lost to high one. Troy Wilson takes it at the 15-yard line, down immediately at the 14-yard line. Down on the play by Kirk Gutierrez, who was under the putt in a hurry. The score is Notre Dame 7, Army nothing. We have 8.06 left to play in the first quarter. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium in just a moment. Notre Dame leading Army 7 nothing. 8.06 to play here in the first quarter. Army coming in 5-0, Notre Dame 1-3. Notre Dame first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. Tim Brown in motion, Pinkett gets the call. Pinkett is up at the 19-yard line. Good defensive play by Matt Buckner, the left side cornerback, a senior from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Alan Pinkett picking up about four on the play. It'll be second down and six. And whole right side of the Notre Dame offensive line caved down a defensive end and tackle from Army, enabling Pinkett to get to the outside and make positive yardage on first down. Jim Brown wide right, wide left is Alvin Miller. Pinkett the call again. Pinkett gets up to around the 24-yard line. He is close to a first down before he's upended at the 24. Alan Pinkett trying to become the all-time Notre Dame leading rusher surpassing Vegas Ferguson, and he needs 45 yards to accomplish that. He got the first down, Notre Dame. I mean, no Notre Dame is taking a page out of the Army's playbook. It's power football and a touchdown uh, series, but the series before, and now Pinkett again on two plays to the right side. Reggie Ward in for Alvin Miller. He's wide left, wide to the right is Tim Brown. On a first and 10 from their own 25-yard line, it is Alan Pinkett again. Pinkett reels off about four more yards before he is tripped up by Dave Shire along with Kurt Gutierrez. It'll be second down and five. Ray Griffiths checking in at linebacker for Army. Larry Biggins is out. That Notre Dame offensive line, which is a big, tough offensive line, cannot pull out any kind of trapping. Just straight ahead football and let Pinkett find the hole. Second down and a long five, Notre Dame. They have it at their own 29-yard line. Burline back to throw. Has time. Up the middle, in and out of the grass for this big tight end, Tom Raider. Defending on the play was John Thompson along with Dave Shire. 
one of the few passes that Notre Dame has thrown right now. You see Sh Shire, the linebacker, dropping off in his zone area. The tight end is open. Raider is open for a second. The ball was delivered very hard to him. He just drops the football. Good hit by Shire, the junior from Seattle, Washington. It'll be third down and five Notre Dame. They have it at their own 29-yard line. Berline again back to pass. Delivers. It is caught by Reggie Ward for a first down at the 48-yard line of Notre Dame. Doug Pavick knocked him out of bounds, but not before Reggie Ward has a first down. Third down and five. Berline just straight drop back. It's a good route by Reggie Ward. It's an out pattern. And Berline puts the ball right there. Good defense by Army, but Berline with Ward was too good. Good for 18 yards and a first down at their own 48-yard line. Ward is out. Alvin Miller back in. Miller wide right, wide to the left is Tim Brown. Steve Berline back to throw again. Up the middle has the tight end Raider inside the 40 to the 36-yard line. Brought down by Doug Pavick at the 36, but another Notre Dame first down. Same identical play they ran before when Raider dropped the football. Raider going and hooking up across the middle. They've got Pinkett and a blocker in front of them in the flat area. The linebackers were conscious of Pinkett, did not get deep enough, and Raider was wide open, and it made some good yardage after the catch. Raider's a big one, 6'7", 243, a junior from Santa Maria, California. It's first and 10, Notre Dame. Hand off, Allen Pinkett, a gaping hole. Pinkett inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. First down, Notre Dame. He was stopped by Gerald Rondo at the 15. It's just a straight power play out of that I formation. Allen Pinkett, who hits the hole very quickly. It's a huge hole right here in the middle. You see Shire get knocked right down onto the ground. And now Pinkett's in open field. Again, a good block downfield. And when he gets it open field, not one guy can bring him down. 22-yard gain, and Pinkett is 18 away from the all-time Notre Dame rushing record. It's first and 10 Irish at the 15 of Army. Jim Brown in motion. Penalty markers down. Illegal procedure, Notre Dame will move it back to the 20-yard line where it'll be first and 15. You know, Harry, this offense is a much maligned offense for not scoring points. Had to settle for field goals, which really cost him two games this year. Tip uh, off foul, false start, offense, repeat, first down. Right now, they're running the football effectively, play action pass with Burline. He seems to be very sharp. They came out here in the first quarter after a two-week layoff, and they look like an outstanding football team. First and 15, Notre Dame. They have it at the Army 20-yard line. The White Hours to the same side, the right. They are Tim Brown and Reggie Ward. Jim Young, head coach of Army, who's really turned the cadets program around. In motion is Brown. Inside handoff to the fullback stands, and not much there. He gains about a yard. Stopped by Jim Brock along with Tom Malloy. Gain of a couple call it will be second down and 13 Notre Dame at the 18 yard line of Army. And if Notre Dame can punch it in here right now for a touchdown to get up on Army 14 nothing in the first quarter, it really puts a lot of pressure on that triple option because it takes a long time to score to get back in the game. Second down, 13 Notre Dame. out he's in trouble Malloy knocks him out at the 19 yard line Tom Malloy fine defensive end from Leesburg Virginia making the play Burline nowhere to go a loss of a yard on the play brings up a third down and 14 and that may have been a busted play with Burline going the wrong way his back went the opposite direction he hesitated in the backfield it was not like a design naked bootleg and it threw him for a loss but for Burline to go to the air, he's three for four for 52 yards thus far. It's third down and 14 Notre Dame. Burline straight back, looks upfield, going deep, wide open, touchdown, Tim Brown. 
Tim Brown was wide open in the corner of the end zone. The sophomore from Dallas, Texas, got a perfect delivery from Steve Burline. Harry, they flooded that area. They had Pinkett coming out of the backfield, running a streak pattern right up the middle. They concentrated on him. Brown just way deep in the corner of the end zone is wide open. Had to be a blown coverage with Brown being that wide open in the corner. Now the conversion attempt for Notre Dame, leading 13-0. Al Von Wilde to hold. Carney's kick is up, and it is good. 4.46 left to play in the first quarter. We have a timeout with a score. Notre Dame 14, Army nothing. We'll be right back. Do you know Indiana Harry Callis along with Jack Ham Notre Dame leading 14 to nothing for Tim Brown his first touchdown of the year and he is a fine wide receiver. See Burline looking right down the middle then turning his head to the outside looked at Pinkett initially then Brown just drifted in the corner of the end, end zone wide open and he also had Reggie Ward down there so they flooded the area then delivered the ball to Tim Brown for the touchdown. Notre Dame's passing in the early going Jack Ham has been very successful. Well they're getting good protection the running game is working I mean you couldn't have drawn up a better offense this first quarter after they got the turnover and put it in for a touchdown and then dro driving the length of the field to put the score on the board. Lampley and Jones are the deep men for Army. Clarence Jones number 40. William Lampley number 20. But Carney hardly ever has any that are returned and that one won't be returned. Army will have it first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. So for Army trailing now by two touchdowns. Is it tough, Jack Ham, for a wishbone team to get behind and come back? It is tough for a wishbone team to drive the length of the field. They've had the ball three times to start on the 20-yard line, but they will, Jim Young will not change his game plan right now. It's too early in the football game, only being down 14-0, and they can break some big plays. First and 10, Army, they have the ball at their own 20-yard line. On the option play, Crawford gets about two, and that is all. Corey Crawford, the quarterback was brought down on the play by Greg Dingens, a senior from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. And the difference between this week and last week for Army against Boston College, now it's second down and eight, second down and nine. Last week was second down and four, second down and three. Army will rush now for 10 rushes for 11 yards up to this point. They came into the game leading the nation in rushing just ahead of Nebraska. It's second down and nine. On the option play, Crawford reads it well, gets up to the 26, and a sure tackle by Pat Ballage brings him down to the 26-yard line. Well, we showcased Ballage early in, in the pregame, and he made a good open field tackle, but they had Crawford running parallel to the line of scrimmage. He did not get turned up field. He got some yards. Now again, it's a third down at about four and a half. Third down, Army. They have the ball at their own 26-yard line. Inside handoff, Black, and he appears to be just short of the first down. Greg Dingens there at the bottom of the pile. And it's decision time, I think, right now for Jim Young. He may go for it. He's very confident in that triple option with a half a yard to go, being down 14-0 on your own 29-and-a-half yard line. It's a gutsy call. They'll bring in an extra tight end, Charles Moses, senior from Dallas, Texas. It's a gutsy call, but Doug Black has not been thrown for a loss all year. Fourth down. Black doesn't get the handoff. Instead, they give it to Jones, and he has the first down at the 32-yard line. Clarence Jones, the ball carrier, he's averaging eight and one-tenth yards per carry in its first down army. And that's going to give credit to that Notre Dame defense. They're giving up yards very grudgingly against that triple option. No big plays so far here in the first quarter with 2.56 left. First and 10 Army, they have it at their own 32-yard line, trailing 14 to nothing. Crawford on the option play. Had some running room at closed in a hurry as Cody Furjanic, the senior linebacker from Chicago Mount Carmel, makes the stop. At the 36-yard line, a pickup of four. It'll be second down on the play. Crawford carrying the football so much here in the first quarter. They're taking away the pitch. They're taking away the dive. If they're going to get beat, it's going to make Crawford carrying the football at that quarterback position all afternoon. Corey, a sophomore, started last week against Boston College, had a big game. Rob Healy, the number
number one quarterback is available. Crawford got away from one man, but he couldn't elude Pat Valley. A senior from Pueblo, Colorado, nailed Torrey Crawford for a loss on the play. Back to the 33-yard line. We talked about battles before. Right now, the defensive line just gets penetration. Crawford coming down the line of scrimmage, and finally Ballard catches him really from behind, but it never gave Crawford a chance to get turned upfield. The pursuit by Notre Dame is so great, there may be a reverse be run soon. Third down and long. Back to pass, Crawford has some time. It closes up on him, and he throws it away in desperation as Eric Dorsey was right on his knees. Eric Dorsey, the senior from McLean, Virginia. Dropped him back at the 31-yard line. The punting situation is on. Harold Rambush, the freshman from Albany, Georgia, doing the putting. The deep man is Troy Wilson with the up man, Alvin Miller. Notre Dame a rush, but he gets it away. It's a high boot, fair catch called and made by Troy Wilson. Notre Dame will take over in good field position at their own 41-yard line. A 28-yard punt, not a long punt by Rambo. The score is Notre Dame 14, Army nothing. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium. Ball first and 10 at their own 41-yard line. Steve Berline brings them up to the line. Pinkett and Frank Stams are the running backs. Play action pass. Throws it behind the intended receiver, Alan Pinkett. It'll be second down of 10 Notre Dame. Ball at the 41 yard line, their own 41. Our statistician today, John Butera, spotter Ted Woodward. And, and Steve Berline right now is, is four for six for 71 yards, but he had Alan Pinkett behind the linebackers wide open. He catches the football, he's going to go a long way. It'll be a second down and 10 call for Burline at their own 41-yard line. Alan Pinkett gets the call. Not a whole lot there. He gets a couple of yards. Pinkett, the ball carrier. He was stopped by Dave Shire, who leads Army in tackles. The junior from Seattle, Washington, came into the game with 57 tackles. Dave Shire read the offensive line this perfectly. It was a counter play to Pinkett coming to his right side. Shire read the block, came down the line of scrimmage, and stopped Pinkett for about a two-yard game. Third down and eight, Reggie Ward has checked in at the wide out for Notre Dame. He's wide to the left, wide to the right is Tim Brown. They have three wide outs. Alvin Miller is also in, so they have trip wide outs. In motion goes Tim Brown. Hand off on a draw play to Pinkett. Breaks the tackle, fights his way to the 49, but he'll be short of a first down. Brought down by John Thompson and Kurt Gutierrez. At the 49-yard line, short of a first down, it's fourth down, and Dan Sorensen will come in to punt. With an outstanding play by John Thompson. Pick it in open field on that delayed draw. They guessed right against that Army defense, got him in open field, but Thompson came up with a key tackle to stop him two yards short. Sorensen, 14th in the nation in putting. He's been a good one. He lost a high boot. It's going to hit inside the 10, and it's going to stop right there at the nine yard line covered by Notre Dame. It was covered by Dave Butler and it'll be first and 10 for Army, they'll have it. Well, they'll spot it at the 11 yard line, they're own 11. A lot of yards to be made up on a special team. There's a lot of yards to be, be uh, achieved there right now. Notre Dame, which had good field position but had to kick the football away, has pinned Army back on their 11-yard line. That's a long way to go with that triple option. Fine 42-yard punt by Sorensen. First and 10, Army. They have it at their own 11-yard line. Inside handoff to Black, and he gets four back to the 15. Greg Dingens making the tackle. Wheels off four yards, and that's the end of the first quarter. And the score is Notre Dame 14, Army nothing. Leading by a score of 14 to nothing. Army with the ball, second down and six. They have it at their own 15-yard line. Crawford rolling out. He keeps, and he is wrestled down at about the 17-yard line by Tony Perjanic, along with Robert Banks. 
Notre Dame's defense continues to stretch out that triple option, make Crawford carry the football, and just keep, keep him running towards the sideline to find the pursuit, bank, and also Frigenic in on the play. Third down and four for Army. They have it at their own 17-yard line. Doug Black is met at the line of scrimmage, and he powers his way up to the 20, but he is short of a first down. He was met by Jeff Coons, a sophomore from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, 252 pounds. And Army will not gamble on fourth down at their own 20. They will punt it away. Harold Rambush, the freshman, comes into punt. Roy Wilson back in safety for Notre Dame. Brandy Wells gets a hand on the punt. And it goes out of bounds to the 45-yard line, but roughing the punter is going to be called. Randy Wells coming from the outside. Hit the punter, the official right there through the flat a little bit late down on the nine-yard line. This is a crucial penalty. It's going to give Army a first down. They would have kicked the football away. Five yards, first down. Randy Wells, number five, coming from the left-hand side, goes for the punter. He really gets blocked into him. The, the official threw the flag a little bit late, but he got blocked into the punter. It should not have been a, a penalty. Anytime you get blocked into the punter, but it's not a penalty, and the official really blew the call. It will be a first down, however, for Army. They have it at their own 25-yard line. They maintain possession. Ron Rice, the center over the ball. Here's a handoff to Lampley and nothing there. Jeff Coons has done a good job at defensive line. A sophomore from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Not a starter has been a key factor here defensively for Notre Dame. And this is a well-prepared Notre Dame defense. It's covering all the gaps. Who has the pitch man on the containment? They are making no mistakes right now. They're getting to the football. It'll be a second down and about nine call for Torrey Crawford. Pitches back to Jones. Jones cuts inside. He's met head out of about the 30-yard line. Brought down on the play by Tony Perjanic. Along with Steve Lawrence. Lawrence is a junior from Ypsilanti, Michigan. There's Steve Lawrence did a good job of coming off the block. Army blocks very low around your ankles and knees. Fought off the block with his hand and forced the play back into Frigenic. They're down on five call. Army with two wideouts now. Benny White and Spellman and Crawford looking. He's got some running room. He finally delivers to Spellman. Complete for a first down at the Army 44-yard line. Pat Ballage and Troy Wilson making the hit, but... He got Scott Spellman for a first down, the senior from Bloomingdale, New Jersey. That's one of the few times Notre Dame defense was not ready. They had people turned around asking for their assignment check, and they snapped Crawford snapped the football and got it to Spellman for the first down. 14 yard gate on the play. It's first and 10 Army. They have it at their own 44. Jerry Faust, 1 0 against Army, 1 1 against Jim Young, Young and Purdue. Here's the reverse to Spellman. Spellman has watched the running room. Spellman finally filled from behind by Pat Ballage at the 32-yard line. Any, anytime you have a team that's really pursuing to the football, the whole defensive line and linebackers, they're very vulnerable to the reverse. That time it comes back to Spellman, number four, and he turned it up with about three or four blockers in front of him and took it down to the 32. Jack, you were looking for that play. He got it again on a play at 24 yards. It's first and ten for Army at the Notre Dame 32-yard line. Here's Black, and Black just pulls off John Smith, the fine offensive right guard, and gets down to the 23-yard line, close to a first down. Black came into this game as the 12th leading rusher in the nation. He's just a tough, rugged fullback, stays very low, came right off Don Smith and got some positive yardage. They're making big plays right now. The Notre Dame defense right now on a 23-yard line has to rally. Second down and a yard to go for the first down for Army. Notre Dame leading 14-0, 11-19 to play in the first half. You 
Crawford on the keeper. Crawford has the first down. He's nailed from behind at the 20-yard line by Cedric Figaro, but he picks up the first down. Missouri leading number seven, Nebraska, seven to six in the first quarter. And that is a surprise. Ohio State rolling over Purdue 17-0 in the second quarter. Here it's first and 10 Army inside the Notre Dame 20-yard line. Black with a gaping hole, and Black gets down to about the 11-yard line before Steve Lawrence can trip him up. Look at the offensive line. The wide splits they're taking, trying to spread that Notre Dame defense out, and all of a sudden you hit Black right up the middle. They're taking very wide splits to widen out that defensive line. Well, Don Smith just buried Eric Dorsey on that play. Black six carries for 32 yards. Black again inside the 10-yard line. It'll be a first and goal Army. He just goes behind big number 79, the 6'4", 270-pound senior from Frederick County, Ohio. Well, that's not a bad idea to have that in your offense. Black getting the football is about two, a yard and a half behind Don Smith. There's no way you can stop Don Smith. He comes off the ball so low, gets into the linebacker or defensive lineman, and they make positive yards. First down and goal to go for Army. Here's Black again, and he fights from the left side this time, down inside the five-yard line, where it'll be second down and goal to go. Cedric Figaro was there, along with Ron Weisenhofer. When you widen out a defense, they're so vulnerable that an inside fullback dive play, they've gone to Black so many times on this drive to take it inside the five. It'll be a second down and goal to go call. On the option play, Crawford cuts it back, does not get in. He's stopped by Greg Dingens at about the two-yard line. And it'll bring out a third down and goal to go. Brothers Greg and Matt Dingens both in there now. Greg is senior, Matt a sophomore. Greg Dingens, the senior, is an academic All-American. Eric Dorsey checking back in for Notre Dame. And Andy Peterson, number 47 in the lineup, giving Black a rest right now. They're a little confused. And rather than run the play, they call a timeout. So Army will call a timeout with 9.04 left to play in the first half. The score is Notre Dame 14, Army nothing. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium in just a moment. Down and goal to go. Corey Crawford. Corey Crawford keeps, and he's not going to get there. Cedric Figaro was right there. The 6'3", 232-pound sophomore from Lafayette, Louisiana. Figaro, the linebacker. Here's Crawford faking the dive, play down the line. Just Figaro gets penetration on the goal line. You just get penetration in the backfield and bring Crawford down. Army will go for it. They'll eschew the field goal. Two tight ends. Charles Moses has come in on fourth down and goal to go. The pitch back, a halfback pass. No, he was out of the end zone. The halfback pass from Lampley to Rob Dickerson ruled out of the end zone, and Notre Dame will take over on down. Jim Young doesn't like the call. Here's another addition to the option, faking a dive play, pulling it back out. Now Lampley getting the ball, trying to get it to Dickerson. He delivers the ball, Dickerson running to the sideline. The official ruling, he did not get that one foot inbounds when he made the reception. And the score is Notre Dame 14, Army nothing. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium in just a moment. play but Dickerson was ruled out of the end zone at the end of the play right now Lampley delivered a football all you need is one foot in bounds in college football to be a touchdown thing on the end of the if one foot is on the line it looked like the official right the official made the correct call but Jim Young on the sideline is absolutely livid <laughs> 
<laughs> you can say that, good. That's getting into the game. Yeah. <laughs> First and ten Notre Dame, they have it at their own three-yard line. Notre Dame leading 14-0, 8.27 left to play first half, and Alan Pinkett just dies for a couple to give Notre Dame some breathing room to the five-yard line. They'll bring up a second down and eight. Pinkett now with 42 yards on nine carries. He needs eight to become Notre Dame's all-time leading rusher, surpassing Vegas Ferguson. And that was a real impressive drive by Army all the way down the field, and they're not a conservative football team at all. Gone for it on fourth down in their own territory. Now on fourth down, the option pass that almost worked for the touchdown. Tom Monahan has checked in for Frank Sams at fullback. Alan Pinkett racing wide, and he's caught on a sure tackle at the seven-yard line by Dave Shire, who's a fine linebacker for Army number 90. I think it makes a player a, a good linebacker. He's not getting hung up with the blocks when people are getting to the outside. Shire does a good job of coming right down the line of scrimmage, and he made the open field tackle on Pinkett, or he might have gotten the first down. It's a third down and about five call for Burline. And now Burline finally realized they had taken too much time. They weren't going to get the playoff, so Notre Dame calls timeout. Rather than risk being penalized inside their own tent, we have a timeout with the score. Notre Dame 14, Army nothing. Will Bay Shire, the fine linebacker for Army, getting the instructions from the defensive coordinator for the Black Knights of the Hudson. Notre Dame leading 14 to nothing, 7-17 to play first half. A third down and five call for Notre Dame. They have it at their own seven-yard line. Right out to the same side, the left there, Ward and Brown. Burline looks up field. Reggie Ward in and out of his hands at the 35-yard line. The ball was delivered. Doug Pavick defending on the play along with Daryl Rondo. Harry Re Reggie Ward was wide open on that play. They, they fake it to play action to pick it. He delivers the football. He had to come back for it and stop catch he should have made down around the 35 yard line now they have to punt the football right back to army dan Sorensen, a walk on junior from long lake minnesota does the punting 12th in the nation coming in and nearly blocked but he gets it away londo a great punt returner londo gets it to the 41 yard line good field position for army a 39 yard punt and a return of around six by londo making it first and ten army at their Notre Dame, 41-yard line. And after driving the length of the field and not getting any points at all, again, their defense did a good job, stopped Notre Dame and got the football back in good field position. It's important for Army right now to put some points on the board. Dory Crawford, the quarterback, back to pass, looking up field. Delivers deep, caught by Benny White to the four-yard line of Notre Dame. Crawford to Benny White at first and goal for Army on a 37-yard pass play. There's so many things you can do with that triple option. That time Crawford could have run with the football for about 10 yards, but decided to throw the ball. Bacon right now into black and then just pulls it back out. Looks downfield. He could have thought about running. Finally just threw the football down to Benny White, who's wide open at the five. Crawford's three for three for 68 yards in the passing department. On the option play, pitches back, Lampley, touchdown, Army. On the pitch back from Torrey Crawford to William Lampley. And the cadets are on the board. And that drive, two big plays with Crawford engineered this time. They ran the triple option perfectly. Pitches the football out the last second. Here's Lampley takes it in with one hand and just walks into the end zone. Great execution on a triple option by Crawford. Lampley's fifth touchdown of the year. Scott Spellman will hold for the conversion attempt by Craig Stopa. He has 41 consecutive points after. Make that now 42 as it is good. And the score is Notre Dame 14, Army 7. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium in just a moment. Lee's Army 14 to 7. Army getting on the board on this play. 
which is great, executes it. Crawford just holds the ball to the last minute and just dumps the football off to Lampley, the ball a little bit behind him, but Crawford held the ball to the defender came to him and just pitched it back for an easy touchdown. Lampley's fifth touchdown of the 1985 season, and Army will kick off Craig Stopa to do the kicking, the deep men for Notre Dame, Hiawatha Francisco on the far side, Alvin Miller on the near side. Long kick off, and Francisco will just let it go over his head, and Notre Dame will have it first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Hiawatha Francisco's brother, Duan Francisco, a freshman with the Notre Dame team. It took Army just two plays, one of them a long pass play to Benny White to go 41 yards in 25 seconds, and Lampley the touchdown. Notre Dame leads 14-7, Notre Dame with the ball, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Verline to throw on first down. Delivers to Alvin Miller. It's the first down at the 36-yard line of Notre Dame. He was stopped by Doug Pavick. 17-yard pass play from Verline to Alvin Miller. And Verline went right back to the same play that he missed Reggie Ward with the series before on third down. A crossing route right across the middle. This time, Miller catches the football for the first down. Burline five for eight for 89 yards. It's first and 10 at the 37-yard line for Notre Dame. Allen Pinkett gets the call. Pinkett over the 50 to the 46 of Army. And Allen Pinkett has become Notre Dame's all-time leading rusher, surpassing Vegas Ferguson. In this play, when he got the record, is vintage Allen Pinkett. Good offensive third, gets right through the hole. Bonnie good. Gutierrez finally brings him down on the shoestring tackle, but he is so quick off the mark to get through a hole so fast that Gutierrez saved the touchdown. Alan Pinkett, now the Fighting Irish's all-time leading ground gainer. On that run, he's picked up 61 yards. Play action pass. Raider was wide open. He's at the Army 40-yard line. A pickup on the play of six. It'll be second down and four for Notre Dame. And Notre Dame's offense feels they can do anything they want to against that Army defense. If they run the football with Pinkett, they're blowing them off the ball. Play action. The linebackers cannot get out in time. They hit Raider across the middle a number of times. Tony Easton, a sophomore, is in at the wide out. He's wide right. Wide to the left is Tim Brown. Blitz by Pavick, but the handoff goes to the fullback, Sam. And Sam gets close to a first down near the Army 36-yard line. Larry Biggins making the tackle for Army. And that time the Army defense guessed wrong. They were hoping for a play-action pass with Doug Pavick coming off the corner. He sort of their designated blitzer. He made a number of big plays against Boston College. But it was a handoff, straight-ahead handoff to Sam, and it almost went for big yardage. Andy Heck comes in as an extra tight end for Notre Dame, a freshman from Annandale, Virginia. They have two tight ends from the power eye on a third down and one call. And off goes to Tom Monahan, the senior from Arcola, Illinois, picks up the first down at the Army 35-yard line. Uh, Harry put so much pressure on a defense when Allen Pinkett is running so well here in the first half. And when they use play action and fake it to him, that's those areas behind the linebackers are opening up for the wide receivers with big yardage that Furline's been hitting here on this drive. First and 10 Notre Dame at the Army 35-yard line. The wide out to the right, Ethan and Tim Brown. Delay to Alan Pinkett, and there's nothing there. Fighting off the block was the nose guard, Jim Brock, along with Tom Malloy. But Jim Brock, number 94, really fought off a block. And Jim Brock, very quietly, has had an outstanding game. He's, he's responsible for the draw. Any kind of delays up the middle took the blocker right on. And with help from number 44, Tom Malloy made the play for a loss. Brock fought off a good blocker, too, with Tim Scantle your offensive guard for Notre Dame. It's a second down, 11 call for Notre Dame at the 36-yard line of Army. Burline back to pass, has great protection. The ball is knocked down by Malloy. He wanted to hit Alan Pinkett, 
The ball knocked down by Tom Malloy. That time Tom Malloy dropped off and really got in the line of flight of the football. He just jumped up in the air and almost came up with an interception. But Burline is getting so much time back there to throw the football. He's getting no pressure at all from that defensive army. Notre Dame looking at a third down and 11 from the Army 36-yard line as Tony Easton comes in with a play from the bench. Easton goes wide right. They have trip wide receivers. With Alvin Miller and Tim Brown on the left. Burline with all kinds of time. Nobody open. Good secondary coverage and the tackle made by John Thompson. John Thompson, the senior cornerback from Tyler, Texas, with the sack. And Notre Dame now back at their own 42. And the punting situation will be on for the Irish. John Thompson finally got to Burline after he looked downfield for a number of seconds. It really was a coverage sack downfield. The Army secondary did an outstanding job of covering four wide receivers downfield. Dan Sorensen will do the punting. Darrell Londo and safety for Army. Londo, fair catch at the 13-yard line, and Army will have it first and 10 at their own 13-yard line. We have a timeout with the score, Notre Dame 14, Army 7. We'll be right back. Don't miss. 48 to play first half. Notre Dame leading 14-7. Army with the ball. First and 10 at their own 13-yard line. Crawford on the rollout. Crawford is going to keep, and Crawford is going to be backed up by Robert Banks, the junior linebacker from Hampton, Virginia. Picked up on the play around three yards, three or four. It'll bring out a second down and seven. At halftime, we'll be entertained by the Notre Dame marching band. We'll have highlights of the first half. The TEM Sports feature, Focus on Football 85, featuring the grand old tradition of Notre Dame and Army football. We'll keep you posted on some of the other big games across the country, all coming up at halftime. Second down and seven. Crawford again on the option play. He keeps, he has some room, and Haywood strips him of the ball. And it looks like Crawford got it right back. Mike Haywood, the quarterback, a senior from Houston, Texas, made the hit. It'll be third down and one. Well, Crawford is continuing to carry the football on this triple option. Faking coming right down the line of scrimmage, but Notre Dame defense doing a good job of pursuit, forcing back down, and finally, finally Haywood, come, Haywood comes in with a left hook <laughs> and really brings Crawford down. They're down and one, and they call on Doug Black, and he gets the one yard necessary for a first down. Black is six foot, 210 pounds out of Solano, Texas. Pittsburgh leads Rutgers in the second quarter, 7 0. Maryland and Wake Forest, nothing, nothing. Also a first quarter, and Illinois indeed leads Michigan State, 7 3, first quarter score. Here it's 14 7, Notre Dame. Crawford looking to pass, fires it deep downfield, it is caught by Lampley for a first down. Mike Haywood making the tackle, but the pass play from Torrey Crawford to William Lampley, good for a first down at the 47. This has probably been the big play of the first half for Army in the triple option. It's a fake, and then coming back with Crawford throwing the football. Lampley is wide open down the sideline to get out of bounds with 1.15 left to go in the clock. The non-passing team, four for four in the passing department for 85 yards are the cadets. First and 10 at their own 47. Inside handoff, Black. He fumbles, a loose ball. Who has it? Ball is at the 43-yard line. It appeared that Black got it right back. He did it first down Army at the Notre Dame 42-yard line. And the clock stopped at 107 until the chains are moved, which saves some time for Army. Very fortunate Black does not fumble the football that often. First down Army at the Notre Dame 43-yard line. Army with a late drive here in the first half, trailing 14-7. On the option play, Crawford keeps, and he is really nailed by Weisenhofer. The ball is loose, but I believe the whistle had blown the play dead. 
Ron Weisenhofer, a senior from Oak Lawn, Illinois, making the stop. A gain of one, it'll be second down and nine, and Army calls a timeout to stop the clock with 45 seconds to play first half. And this is the problem with triple option. It's very difficult to move the football downfield with a, with a short uh, amount of time with only 45 seconds left to go in the clock. Number five, Florida leading Southwest Louisiana 7-0. That's in the second quarter. Nebraska's gone on top of Missouri 9-7, also in the second quarter. Ohio State still leading Purdue 17 to nothing. Coming up at halftime, we'll keep you updated on scores across the country. We'll also feature the Notre Dame Fighting Irish Marching Band. We'll have highlights of the first half. And our TEN Sports feature, Focus on Football 85. Feature this great tradition of Notre Dame and Army football. Well, really finding out what the Notre Dame defense is trying to do against that triple option. Crawford has carried the football in the first half 16 times for 25 yards, and he's taken quite a beating here with 45 seconds left to go. One of the great games in this tradition was the win one for the Gipper game. 1928, Notre Dame beat Army 12-6. They finished 5-4 that year under Newt Rockby, which was almost unheard of. The following year, Newt went 9-0. It'll be second down and nine for Army. Crawford keeps Cedric Figaro was right there to drop him at the 39-yard line. Figaro, the sophomore linebackers, had a fine defensive game for Notre Dame. It'll be a third down and seven call now at the 39-yard line of Notre Dame with a clock ticking at 25 and counting for the first half. Crawford hits Benny White on the sideline, and he has a first down at the Notre Dame 31-yard line. Just a quick sideline pattern to stop the clock and get some yardage, and right now they are within the range of Craig Stoffel, who was kicking them 52 yards before the game and workout. And we're also finding out Army's not a one-dimensional football team. They can throw the football. Crawford has really shown me something with that arm that time on that out pattern to get the first down on the 31-yard line. He's five for five in the passing department for 93 yards. First down at the Notre Dame 31-yard line. 19 seconds to play first half. Crawford inside handoff and absolutely nothing there this time at the 30-yard line. And Army will stop the clock. They'll call time with 15 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. And a decision right now for Jim Young with no timeouts left. They cannot get their field goal team on the field unless they get a play that goes out of bounds and stops the clock with 15 seconds left to go. They're not going to take that chance right now. They're going to bring on the field goal team. Sopa, who holds all kinds of Army records. Most field goals in a game, five versus Air Force last year. Most field goals in a season, 15 last year. Most field goals, career 46. He has kicked three 50-yarders in his career. His long this year, 53 yards against Yale. He is 12th in the nation in scoring. The senior from Prospect, Kentucky, has been a fine kicker for Army. And this one will be about a 47-yard field goal try. And really for Jim Young and the Army team, they battled back after the turnover in the first series and then Notre Dame going up 14-0. If they get the field goal here for 10 points right before the half, it'll be a big lift for them in the second half. A 47-yard attempt. Ron Rice will snap. The holder is Scott Spellman. Good snap, ball is spotted. Food is low, and it is wide to the right and not good. Not a good kick by Stopa. So Army does not get the field goal, and Notre Dame with 11 seconds left to play in the first half will have it first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. And Stopa will be an outstanding kicker. That ball just never had a chance from the minute it came off the, off the tee. It was like a knuckleball way wide to the right and never had an opportunity for us to make Notre Dame with 11 seconds might well just settle for a 14 to 7 halftime lead we'll see what Burline calls the junior from Fullerton California he's gonna throw the ball 
throws it to the sideline. It's juggled and recovered by Frank Sams, and Sams is dropped at about the 37. Reggie Fullwood making the tackle. Notre Dame calls a timeout to stop the clock with three seconds remaining. Well, they're in a chance right now. They've got great skilled people. It's really put three people on one side of the field. Maybe go by an alley-oop play downfield. Let Burline throw it as far as he can. Either hope for a tip ball or a reception or maybe even possibly a pass interference call. Notre Dame 1-3 and three coming in, losing to Michigan, Purdue, and Air Force, beating Michigan State. And the remainder of the schedule for the Irish. Irish schedule rated as the toughest in the nation by one publication. They have USC, Navy, Old Miss, Penn State, LSU, and Miami. Another sellout here at Notre Dame Stadium. Their 61st consecutive sellout. 59,075 Notre Dame Stadium seats. Here's Notre Dame taking the tight end out, bringing in Reggie Ward, Alvin Miller, and Tim Brown. Three wide receivers can really get down the field in a hurry. I think we may find out how strong an arm Steve Berline really has right here on the last play. Greg Dingen shaken up in this game, the senior academic All-American from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Going deep downfield, caught by Alvin Miller, but the time is going to run out on Notre Dame at the Army 25-yard line. Daryl Londo really leveled him. It was caught by Miller, but time runs out on Notre Dame. That's the end of the first half, and the score is Notre Dame 14, Army 7. Don't be a victim of the past. Be a part of the future. saxophone section in the great Woody Herman standard, The Four Brothers. Coming up in just a moment, TEN Sports, focused on Football 85, featuring the grand old tradition of Notre Dame Army football. We're at halftime with the score, Notre Dame 14, Army 7. In the 46th meeting between the Black Knights of the Hudson and the Fighting Irish, we're at halftime at Notre Dame Stadium with the score, Notre Dame 14, Army 7. It has been said that leadership in part is the ability to appreciate challenges other than one's own. The objective of the West Point experience is to make it possible for the individual cadet to become a well-rounded leader on a number of very different levels. West Point consistently ranks in the top five in Rhodes and Hertz scholarships awarded. It is a fact 
that eight out of 10 West Point graduates go on to graduate schools to broaden their capabilities. Traditionally, and now more than ever, West Point serves as the basis for unparalleled career opportunities. The West Point cadet is a salaried college student who receives a full four-year scholarship leading to a Bachelor of Science degree and a commission as an officer in the regular army. The University of Notre Dame's main building with its Golden Dome is one of the nation's most familiar campus landmarks. Reconstructed after a disastrous fire in 1879 virtually destroyed the university, the building symbolizes the spirit of a place dedicated to religious belief as well as higher learning. It remains the crossroads of the campus where administrators, students, and faculty rub elbows with visiting alumni and tourists. And it continues to say one thing to all, Notre Dame. Back at Notre Dame Stadium, Notre Dame, Indiana, we're at halftime, the Fighting Irish leading the cadets of West Point by a score of 14 to 7. Army, for the first time in 23 years, ranked in the top 20 in the nation. They were ranked 19th, and they are in jeopardy of losing that ranking if they lose this afternoon. The top 20 has some surprises, but mostly not a whole lot of surprise, although I think Iowa might be a surprise at number one, Jack. Well, Iowa's got that great passing game with Chuck Long, and he's really got it cranked up with that big game today against Michigan. Oklahoma three, then Arkansas, Florida, your alma mater, Penn State, Nebraska, Auburn, Brigham Young, Air Force somewhat of a surprise in the top ten. Yeah, the Service Academy also runs that triple option, had a big win two weeks ago against Notre Dame. And 11 through 20 featuring Ohio State, Oklahoma State, Florida State. The job that Jim Young has done with this Army team. Well, he just turned the program around last year with the 8-3-1 and season, now undefeated this year. He's got that team believing they can be a good football team. A lot of key matchups coming up this afternoon. Later on, of course, number two, Michigan against number one, Iowa. Miami of Florida against Oklahoma. Texas and Arkansas, always a great rivalry. And your alma mater, Penn State against Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. And Syracuse not having a good year, but Penn State always has trouble playing Syracuse up at the Dome. Nebraska was having some trouble with Missouri at last look, although they were leading. Auburn at Georgia Tech. And a great Southeast Conference matchup, Tennessee number 20, Alabama number 15. More halftime activities coming up with a score. Notre Dame 14, Army 7. We'll be right back. Pittsburgh over Rutgers, 14 to nothing in the second quarter. Clemson leads Duke, 7 to nothing. That's the first quarter score. Maryland having a little trouble with Wake Forest, surprisingly, 6-3 in the second quarter. Michigan State leading Illinois, and that is a surprise, Jack. 17-7, second quarter. Well, George Perla thinks he's got a pretty good football team up there after getting beat by Michigan last week. How about Minnesota? 13-0 over Indiana. Minnesota's really turned it around. Florida, number five, beating Southwest Louisiana 17-0 at the half. That one figures. Penn State leading Syracuse 7-0 first quarter. That one also figures. Jack Ann. And number 20, Tennessee, leads Alabama 10 to 7 at halftime in the Southeast Conference. Well, in college football today, there are so many quality teams on it. Really, on any given Saturday, people can beat each other off. And there's times right now, even though Penn State is leading Syracuse 7 0 up there, that could be a big football game, especially after the big game they had with Alabama last week to win at Beaver Stadium. Joe Paterno is hoping not for a letdown up there at the Carrier Dome. And on most of these stations next week, Jack Ham and Steve Zabriskie will be at the Carrier Dome for the Orange Men of Syracuse and the Temple Owls. Craig Stoffel will kick off. Hiawatha Francisco and Alvin Miller, the deep end for Notre Dame. This one will be returned by Hiawatha Francisco from the one-yard line. Iowa does not get it up to the 20. He stopped in his tracks at the 17-yard line by good coverage by the Black Knights of the Hudson. Bill Horton was there along with Chip England. And one thing you can be sure about the Service Academy, a special team that will always do an excellent job. That time, good coverage on a kick that got down right around the goal line, stopping Hiawatha Francisco from getting back to the 20, stopping it right around the 18-yard line. 
First and 10 Notre Dame. They have it at their own 18-yard line. Reggie Ward wide to the right. Tim Brown wide to the left. Steve Furline, junior quarterback. Play action. Wide open is Pinkett, but he overshoots him at the 39-yard line. Allen Pinkett was open in the middle. Burline pass a little tall. Started out with a play action pass on first down, faking it to Pinkett, and he Pinkett coming out of the back to right down the middle. It held the linebacker so close to the line of scrimmage. Pinkett was wide open at the 35-yard line, and Burline just missed him again. Notre Dame with the lead at the half. 22-8 won their record under Jerry Faust with a halftime lead. Here's Alan Pinkett. Looks for a block, and he got a block from Sams, but it wasn't enough. He gets up to the 20-yard line where he's stopped on the play by Tom Malloy. A gain of just three by Pinkett, bringing up a, I'll call it two, bringing up a third down and eight. And although Kurt Katerra did not make the play, he forced it right back inside. Pinkett had to go back into number 44, Tom Malloy. Army's playing very good, sound defense. Third down and eight call for Steve Berline from his own 20-yard line. Berline straight back to pass. Up the middle, undershoots his intended receiver, Reggie Ward, who was well covered by Bill Sanders. So it's a fourth down in a punting situation for Notre Dame. Dan Sorensen will do the punting. Sorensen, an outstanding student here at Notre Dame, a 3.4 student in accounting. Daryl Blondo, who is third in the nation in punt returns, averaging 16.7 is deep. Blondo has some running room from his 35 back up to the 41 where he was nailed by Butler. A 44-yard punt, another nice return by Londo, and Army will start in good field position at their own 42-yard line. With 13.56 left to play in the third quarter, the score is Notre Dame 14, Army 7. Corey Crawford, the sophomore quarterback, has gone all the way for the Black Knights of the Hudson. Inside handoff, Black, and he has running room, and he reels off five yards before he's wrestled down by Tony Ferjanic. There's no secret what Army's trying to do. If you, if you got a great offensive line, you go right over. The linebackers right now, Ferjanic gets blocked right at the line of scrimmage. He comes off the block, but the... the the momentum of the offensive lineman and able to running back Black to get almost six yards on first down. Black averaging 50, has 58 yards so far this afternoon. It'll be a second down and five call. Jumping back onside is Eric Dorsey and going right over the hole vacated by Dorsey. Torrey Crawford for a first down of the Notre Dame 37-yard line. And Army had the right play call when Dorsey got back on sides. He was off bounds, could not get any kind of charge across the line of scrimmage. Crawford came right there with the play, held it on the option, and got down to the 37-yard line of, of Notre Dame. First and 10 Army at the Notre Dame 37-yard line. Torrey Crawford calling the signal. Inside handoff, and Black just pulls his way for about five yards to the 33-yard line of Notre Dame. Doug Black, the senior, six foot, 210 pounds, averaging 108 yards per game this season. And the All-American Don Smith took Cedric Figaro and just absolutely ran him right over on that play. Here's a counter play, and not much there for Clarence Jones. Jones was brought down by Jeff Coons after he got to about the 31. It'll bring up a third down and four for Army at the Notre Dame 31-yard line. 14-7 Notre Dame, 12 and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter. Benny White goes wide to the right. is the bread and butter and black gets the first down to the notre dame 25 yard line before he is hauled down at the 25 yard line 
where that's great confidence in your offensive line on third down and four. You give the football to your fullback on a dive play. Black gets the first down. Again, going right over Tom Smith, and he is just taking people and pushing him five yards downfield. Finally stopped by West Pritchard. It'll be first and 10 Army at the 25-yard line. Here's Black again, and not a whole lot there this time. He'll get a couple. Inside the Notre Dame 25 to about the 24-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. And ever since the first two possessions for Notre Dame when they went for the touchdown on the, on the turn of the fumble and also the, the next touchdown to Brown, they have punted the football each possession they've had. It's second down and eight for Army. They have the ball at the Notre Dame 24-yard line, trailing 14 to seven. Crawford, the pitch back to Clarence Jones, cuts it up inside the 20 to about the 15. He is close to a first down. Eric Dorsey made the tackle at around the 15-yard line. It is a first down Army. And now Army on the option, instead of going outside, is pitching the football to Jones, but he turned it right up inside. They decided not to try to go outside the containment, and the Notre Dame defensive linemen were pinned right inside. First and 10 Army at the 15-yard line of Notre Dame. They give it to Black, and Black gets about three to the 12-yard line. Brought down and around the 12. Stopped by Jeff Kuhn, sophomore from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. I think ever since the first quarter, Army is now getting more confidence in the running game. They feel they can move the football, especially against this Notre Dame defense. And on this drive, they're doing exactly that. Second down, seven for Army. Crawford, handoff again to Black, and he gets about two, and that's all. Eric Dorsey was there, along with Mike Kiernan. Kiernan, the senior from Highland Heights, Kentucky, a fifth-year senior. Brings out a third down and five call and a critical third down call for Army. They have the ball at the Notre Dame 10. 76 yards for Black on 17 carries. Corey Crawford and Eric Dorsey jumped offside. A good hit there of Crawford at the line of scrimmage by Steve Lawrence but to no avail because it appeared that Eric Dorsey had jumped offside. It is offside Notre Dame. Crawford at the line of scrimmage taking a longer count. He's changing his cadence at the line of scrimmage. There you see Don Smith coming out on a pulling from his right guard position, but Crawford took a longer cadence, disrupted that defensive line, and they went on this before the snap. So a critical penalty against Notre Dame. Notre Dame's been penalized three times for 15 yards. No penalties against Army this afternoon. It moves the ball down close to a first down. Just shy of a first down. Tough break for Notre Dame. They really had Crawford stopped on the third down play. They would have had the field goal attempt. Now third down and short. Third and short, and they give it to Mr. Black, and Mr. Black has the first down and goal to go inside the Notre Dame five-yard line, Doug Black. All East last year, honorable mention All-American, a player who has a plea was told he was too slow to be a fullback, too small to be a linebacker. Played intramural football before Jim Young took over as head coach, and last year got an all-time Army record for most yards gained in a season. First down, goal to go Army. On the option play, Corey Crawford is tripped up by Eric Dorsey at the five-yard line. Eric Dorsey tripping up Crawford, a loss of a yard on the play, bringing on a second down and goal to go. They'll bring in an extra tight end, Charles Moses. I think Eric Dorsey really saved the touchdown because Crawford was coming right down the line of scrimmage. Dorsey just got his left hand out and tripped up Crawford for a yard loss. Second down, goal to go Army. They have it at the Notre Dame six. 
Clarence Jones gets down to about the four-yard line, and that is all. It's third down and goal. Jones was stopped by Troy Wilson on the play. Notre Dame defense down in close inside the five-yard line after giving up the first down, really on the penalty offside penalty. They've gotten very tough against that option now. Wayne Lachlan has checked in at the tight end, number 84 for Army. On a third down and goal to goal for Army. Corey Crawford on the option. Crawford's knee was down before the pitch back to William Lampley. See Crawford right now coming down the line of scrimmage. If any knees are down on the ground, it's a dead play right there. You see his knees on the ground. He was tackled. Jim Young, who did not have a good view at, at, at all, was complaining about the second play that he thought was a touchdown, touchdown the first one in the first half, a uh, touchdown pass he thought was in the corner of the end zone, the official rules incomplete, because the guy was on the out-of-bound out marker. So Jim Young, again, questioned the call. There's no question right here that Crawford was down on the ground. So Army will kick off to Notre Dame. The deep men are Hiawatha Francisco on the far side. Alvin Miller on the near side. Francisco number 33. Miller number 17. Craig Stoffel will do the kicking. 14-10 Notre Dame. 7-41 left to play in the third quarter. Hiawatha Francisco in the end zone is going to try to run it out. Two yards deep in the end zone, and Hiawatha is not going to get to the 20. He's going to be wrestled down by John Thompson at the 18-yard line, where Notre Dame will have it first and 10 at their own 18. And again, the special teams of Army is holding Notre Dame inside the 20-yard line. Hiawatha Francisco looked like he hesitated for a second, not sure what he wanted to do with that kickoff because he was about two or three yards deep in the end zone. Important series here for Notre Dame. First and 10 at their own 18-yard line. They lead 14 to 10, and Alan Pinka gets the call, and Alan Pinka gets up to about the 21. A pickup of three on the play before he's racked up at the 21-yard line. The offense of Notre Dame has no problem moving the football. Just Steve Berlin has to hit the open receiver when he's out there. He's missed a number of receivers in the first half and missed Alan Pinkett here in the first series in the second. It's a second down and seven call for Burline from the, his own 22-yard line. Alan Pinkett again, and Alan Pinkett hurdles his way to the 26-yard line. A pickup on the play of around four yards. It'll be third down and three. Dave Shire, number 90, playing from that linebacker position, really filled the hole. But Alan Pinkett has a quick feet, got up over the blocker, and made a few yards where it looked like he might have got thrown for a loss. Andy Heck, a freshman tight end, has come in for Notre Dame, replacing Tom Rader on a third down and three call. Play action pass right up the middle of Pinkett, and he has the first down, lost his balance and got to the 32-yard line, but enough for a Notre Dame first down. Army on third down and short was playing a zone defense. Very easy to pick up a few yards for the first down. Pinkett just came out of the backfield and hooked right across the middle, and Burline is still a little bit shaky because the ball was a little bit behind Pinkett, but he managed to cut it and get the first down. First and 10, Notre Dame. They have it at their own 32-yard line. Alan Pinkett again, and Alan Pinkett gets about two yards and not much more. He was stacked up at the line of scrimmage. All the forwards for a couple of yards. Getting up off the bottom of the pile is Bob Kleinhampel, the defensive tackle from Pittsburgh. Here's Alan Pinkett in the I formation, just trying to find the hole. One-on-one blocking, cannot find any, any opening at all, and that is just gang tackling by that Army defense and playing a lot better in the second half. Second down and eight Notre Dame. They have it at their own 35-yard line. Army showing blitz. That's Pavic up there. They do not blitz. Alan Pinkett gets away from a couple of tacklers and has a first down to the 43-yard line. Shire finally brought him down. So Pinkett picks up a Notre Dame first down at their own 43-yard line. Army's up on the line of scrimmage, faking a blitz, pulling right back out. But the key to this play is a good block by Sam, the fullback. Pinkett just jumps right over. He has excellent feet, quick feet. Got up over the block by Sam and got the first down. 
Taking 17 carries, 82 yards. First to 10, Notre Dame at their own 43-yard line. Burline looking upfield, has a lot of time. Great catch, Reggie Ward first down at the 39-yard line. Larry Biggins brought him down, but a good grab by the little scat back, Reggie Ward. This time, Burline does a play action fake to pink and holds the linebackers in. Looking downfield and delivers that ball that's very high, but Reggie Ward goes up. He's got a great athletic ability. Here's the offensive line. Right now, giving protection for Burline. There's no chance at all. Number 44 from Army cannot get in there. That's Tom Malloy. But on the subsequent first and 10 play, Allen Pinkett slips trying to make a cut, and it's a loss of two on the play. It'll bring on a second down and 12. Ball at the 41-yard line of Army. Notre Dame scored in their first two possessions. Since then, they have punted four the last five times they've had the ball. And that passing game is open there for Burline. The Army's really conscious of Pinkett. With wide open teams in that Army defensive secondary. Number 24, Mark Green, a brilliant freshman receiver, has just entered the game for Notre Dame. But wide open is Andy Heck for a first down. Close to a first down at the 29-yard line. Matt Buckner made the tackle on the freshman tight end, Andy Heck. Again, Burline just doing what he wants. It's a play-action pass. Andy Heck just comes across the field. You see him at the top of your screen. Burline has all day. Heck makes the catch and just turns up field. But there are wide open seams in that, that Army secondary. The first pass of the year caught by the freshman tight end, Andy Heck, at first and 10 Notre Dame at the Army 29. Sams gets the call. Sams goes nowhere. Lloyd Walker, senior defensive tackle, along with Larry Biggins right there to beat Frank Sams, the fullback. See Jim Young pacing on the sideline. He needs his defense to come up with some big play to get the football back for their offense. And uh, for the most part in the second half, the people have been wide open for Burline if he could just hit them. Second down and about eight for Notre Dame with the 27 yard line of Army. Burline rolling out, gets it away, and is caught by Tim Brown. First down at the 17-yard line of Army. Just a quick out from Burline to Tim Brown. With, it's like it's like pitch and catch right now for Burline. He's rolling out to his right side. No pressure at all on him. He just delivers the football off to Brown. He comes down about eight or nine yards. And then playing that deep zone, Brown's wide open on the sideline route. Burline 12 for 18 for 185 yards. First and 10, Notre Dame. They have it at the 17-yard line of Army. The pair is showing blitz. Allen Pinkett breaks the tackle and first to the 10-yard line of Army. Allen Pinkett reeling off about seven before Piggins and Buckner brought him down for Army. And Army starting to take chances on defense. They had an all-out blitz but Pinkett broke the tackle in the backfield and took the football down to the 11-yard line. Every time Army has blitzed, they've been running a play inside. The blitz has not been effective. 14-10 Notre Dame. Notre Dame with the ball at the Army 11-yard line. A second down and four call for Steve Burline. And off to stands, and the big pullback fights down to the one-yard line. He fumbled. Notre Dame recovered. Sam's got down to the one, fumbled, and Notre Dame got the ball back at the Army one-yard line. Looked like Andy Heck, the freshman tight end, who's seeing his first playing duty this year, and he's been a man on the spot. With the offensive line coming off the ball, Sam doesn't get the football very often. He's the blocker, but here right now he gets stripped of the football, but Andy Heck comes over from the other side of the field and recovers for Notre Dame. First down, goal to go, Notre Dame at the two-yard line of Army. From the power eye, inside handoff and nothing there. Monahan, the ball carrier, Craig Rollins making the hit. Might have gotten a yard. 
This is really not a situation down on the goal line, second down and short for the touchdown. This is where Notre Dame is going to get in that power eye and just try to hammer the football in for the touchdown. They brought in their third team fullback, Fernell Taylor, a junior from La Puente, California, who scored the first touchdown, number 46. On a second down and goal to go. Allen takes it over the top, touchdown Notre Dame. Pinkett with his fifth touchdown of the year. When you get down in close, it's a Notre Dame offensive line just coming off the ball. And Alan Pinkett taking a three or four yard head start and leaping up over the pile into the end zone. But a very impressive drive. Burline hitting some key receivers to keep drives alive. And finally Pinkett up over the top for the touchdown. Pinkett's 42nd rushing touchdown of his career at Notre Dame. That's an Irish record. His 46th career touchdown. Carney's conversion attempt is up, and it is good. 126 to play in the third quarter. We have a timeout. With the score, Notre Dame 21, Army 10. We'll be right back. Next week on most of these stations, PEN Sports will take you to the Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University when the Temple Owls take on the Orange Men of Syracuse. Start time, 12 o'clock noon Eastern time next Saturday on the TEM Sports Network. Notre Dame, an impressive drive, 14 plays, 82 yards. It consumes 6 minutes and 15 seconds. Carney's kick this time will be returned by Lampley from the two. Lampley, good wedge up the middle. Lampley, some running room. Brandy Wells catches him from behind at midfield. But the wedge really cleared it open for Lampley, a 49-yard return. And a flip. A play Army really needed to get back in the game after that touchdown drive by, by Notre Dame. See Lampley getting the football right around the two-yard line. The wedge right in front of him just clears the way for him. No one's even near him. No, bro no broken tackles at all. Then takes it up the sideline to the Notre Dame 48. First and 10 Army. They have it at the Irish 48. Crawford back to pass. Has some time going downfield. It is incomplete. Not Intercepted by Mike Haywood, who thought he had his feet inbound, but did not. Right after the kickoff return, Army tried to go for it all downfield to get a big play. That time, Crawford had a lot of time to throw the football, just overthrew his receiver. And Haywood, who looked like the receiver, tried to keep that one foot inbound, the official right there. The first incompletion for Corey Crawford this afternoon. He's five for six. Second down and ten. Corey Crawford keeps, and that's Jeff Coos, who has played a fine game as a down lineman. He did not start the game, but the 6'6", 252-pound sophomore has really done well on that defensive front for Notre Dame. And he got penetration into the back, so will not let Crawford go down the line of scrimmage and work that option. He stopped it right at the 48-yard line by getting that penetration. Army is 5 for 11 in third down conversions. They have a third down and long here. Third and 10. Crawford back to pass. Looking upfield. Under some pressure. It is incomplete. Way over the head of the intended receiver. Tight end Rob Dickerson. That'll bring out a punting situation for the cadets. Notre Dame leads 21 to 10. We have 32 seconds left to play in the third quarter. And a great opportunity for Army going by the boards after that Lampley kickoff return. It could not move the ball an inch at the 48-yard line of Notre Dame. Harold Rambush to do the punting. He's averaging 31.5 per punt. Troy Wilson, a fair catch, and makes the fair catch at the 16-yard line, where Notre Dame will take over first and 10 at their own 16, a 32-yard punt. The score is Notre Dame 21, Army 10. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium in just a moment. Pitch back to Allen Pinkett. Looks for a block, gets it from Sam, gets up to the 20-yard line, a pickup of around three on the play before he is brought down. Brought down by Bob Kleinhappel. Along with Daryl Londo, it's just over the 20-yard line. Pick up a four by Pinkett. It'll be second down and six. And 
and that's the end of the third quarter. The score is Notre Dame 21, Army 10. One yard line leading 21 to 10. Army showing blitz. Burleigh back to pass. Being rushed. Gets away from one man. It's in and out of the grasp of Allen Pinkett at the 25 yard line. It'll be third down and six. Through three quarters of play. Army with 18 first downs. Notre Dame with 16 of them. 168 yards rushing for Army, 108 for Notre Dame, but Notre Dame in the passing department, 186 to Army's 98. The total yards, Notre Dame 294, Army 266. There was a penalty on the last play. Let's pick it up. Holding penalty against Notre Dame. Moves the ball back to the 10-yard line where it'll be second down and 16. And on this play, Burline got pressure for the first time this afternoon by defensive tackle Lloyd Walker. He put pressure on Burline, almost caused an interception downfield. Second down and long call for Burline. Burline back to pass, has time again, shoots it toward the near sideline, incomplete. It was intended for Tim Brown. He was well covered by Kurt Gutierrez. Brown shaken up a little bit on the play. Brings up a third down and 16 for Notre Dame. That was a long, thro long throw by Burline across the field. Gutierrez was right there and made the play. Maybe a future opponent of Notre Dame and Army leading 7 to nothing. Pittsburgh well up. West Virginia over Boston College 10-6 second quarter. Clemson 21 to nothing over Duke in the second quarter. Third down 16 for Notre Dame. Deep in their own territory at their own 10-yard line. Burline under some pressure, sees some running room. He scrambles out to the 20-yard line. He'll be well short of the first down. It'll bring out a fourth down in a punting situation for Notre Dame. I think Steve Burline is being very careful right now, leading 21 to 10. He does not want to put the ball up for grabs downfield. Looked downfield, could not find anyone open, and just went, tucked the football under his arm and ran with it. Dan Sorensen will do the punting for Notre Dame. Darrell Londo is the deep man for Army. Sorensen, a high, tremendous punt. Back Londo all the way back to the 24. Great coverage. He's dropped in his track by Dave Butler at the 24-yard line. A 55-yard punt by Dan Sorensen. The score is Notre Dame 21, Army 10. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium in just a Notre Dame. He came to Notre Dame as a hockey player, a hockey goalie from Long Lake, Minnesota. Then they made hockey a club sport here at Notre Dame, decided to try out for football, and what a job he has done at punting for Notre Dame. It's first and 10 Army. They have the ball at their own 25-yard line. Corey Crawford is upended by Eric Dorsey at the 23-yard line, a loss of two. Eric Dorsey's made a lot of plays in that defensive tackle position today, bringing Crawford down from behind. He's trying to run that option downfield. Dorsey's shown a lot of quickness, moved from that nose tackle position out the defensive tackle, and has done a great job this afternoon. Second down and 12 for Army. They have it at their own 23-yard line. Corey Crawford has gone all the way at quarterback for Army. The inside handoff to Black, and the big man pulls his way to the 32-yard line. Picked up around 10 on the carry before he was finally dragged down by Steve Lawrence, among others. That Notre Dame defense will not give up that big play on the triple option on the running game. They'll get up some plays on the passing game with Crawford. But by and large, they've contained that option and not had the big play by any of the backs this afternoon. Third down and a long three for Army. They have it at their own 32-yard line. Rolling out is Corey Crawford. And Crawford's great running room gets to the 42 before Mars Spence drops him. At the 42-yard line, it's a first down, Army. 
Crawford taking the play to the outside. He fakes inside a counter play, just takes the football outside, gets outside the containment, and he's just like another running back out there and gets the first down for Army. Crawford, 49 yards, a lot of carries, 23 carries. First and 10 for Army at their own 43-yard line. Here's a pitch back to Lampley. Lampley being pursued, and he's racked up by Tony Verjanic. Verjanic fills him at the 36-yard line, a loss of around seven yards on the play. And Lampley was trying to pull up and try to, that halfback pass one more time. Notre Dame did a good job of covering it downfield. He had nowhere to go with the football and had to take the loss. Now second down and long almost forces Army into a passing situation. Crawford, five for seven in passing, 98 yards. He's back to pass. Cedric Figaro had him. He lost him, and Crawford scrambles out and gets the midfield and close to a first down. Great effort by the sophomore quarterback, Torrey Crawford. This is just an outstanding individual play by Crawford. He's going back to pass. He fakes because he had long yards for a first down. He gets pressure, breaks away from Figueroa, and goes down the side and gets a good block from Lampley and almost gets the first down. He's about a yard short. Third down and about a yard in Notre Dame territory at the 49, but he fumbles the third down snap, and that will bring up a fourth down and trailing 21 to 10. Jim Young undoubtedly will go for it on fourth and about two now. He realizes with the triple option, he needs a lot of time. I think he's going to call a timeout. He's signaling for it right now to talk this over because they need the first down here. Jim Young who has really turned this Army program around as he did at Arizona State and at Purdue. With 11.01 left to play in the fourth quarter, the score is Notre Dame 21, Army 10. Looking at a fourth and two at midfield, and they will go for it. Torrey Crawford rolling out, looking upfield, gets a great block, throws a pass, and is incomplete. Almost looked like Crawford could have run for it, but Notre Dame has held on down. Harry, you're exactly right. He had the corner turn. It's very difficult for a quarterback trying to run to his left, right-handed quarterback and deliver the football on target. He had the corner. He could have gotten a yard and a half or two yards for the first down, elected to go for the receiver downfield, and went incomplete. And the score is Notre Dame 21, Army 10. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium in just a moment. Four left to play in the game. Notre Dame leading 21 to 10. The Irish have just held on down to take over in good field position at their own 49-yard line. Tim Brown comes wide to the right, Reggie Ward wide to the left. Burline in trouble, and Malloy missed him, and Burline gets some yardage up to the Army 44-yard line before he's chased out of bounds. He got away from Malloy, and Matt Buckner knocked him out. So Burline picking up around six on the play, bringing out a second down and four. That's a designed bootleg by Burline coming out, faking to his left, and just taking a naked bootleg to his, to his left side. That time, Malloy was pulled on the plate, came back down the line of scrimmage, but did not knock Burline out of bounds before he got good yardage on first down. Second down and four. Tom Matt Monahan now in a pullback. He leads Allen Pinkett, and Pinkett gets the first down to the 40-yard line of Army. Allen Pinkett, the ball carrier. 22 carries, 97 yards for the All-American tailback of Notre Dame. And he just seems to get better and stronger as the game goes on. He hit that hole so quickly for the first down. Right now, I'm sure Notre Dame is going to try to work on the clock with 10.35 left to go. And they know that Army needs two scores to pull this game out. Ball of the Army 40-yard line where it'll be first down and 10 Notre Dame. Alan Pinkett reels off six more yards before he is wrestled down by Larry Piggin. So Pinkett has gone over the 100 mark, 103 yards. That is his 20th 100-yard game at Notre Dame. 
Earlier today, he established the all-time Notre Dame rushing record, surpassing Vegas Ferguson. Second down and four, Notre Dame at the Army 34-yard line. Here's Pinkett again. Great block, and he has running room. Another great block by Tim Brown. And he's out of bounds at the 15-yard line of Army. First and 10, Notre Dame at the Army 15-yard line, a 19-yard scamper by Alan Pinkett. And Alan Pinkett is just getting better in his fourth quarter. He gets a key block from Brown downfield on number 17, Bill Sanders. Knocked Sanders right off his feet and took the football down to the 15-yard line. Alan Pinkett takes the rest. Hiawatha Francisco is in at the tailback now along with fullback Tom Monahan on a first and 10. Francisco gets the call, and he goes nowhere. Maybe a yard on the play. Francisco to the 14, the whole middle of the Army defense to stop him. It'll bring out a second down of nine for Notre Dame at the 14-yard line, and Alan Pinkett will check back in along with Tim Brown. They don't give Alan Pickett too long of a rest here. One play, and he's right <laughs> back in the game again. But just an outstanding performance by Alan Pickett here this afternoon. Second down, nine, Notre Dame with a 14-yard line of Army. Burline hands off to Pinkett. Pinkett tries to get outside, does. He's stripped up on a good tackle by Bill Sanders at about the nine-yard line. Of Army, it'll bring up a third down and four Notre Dame at the Army nine-yard line with 8.40 left to play. It's Notre Dame leading 21-10. This is story of the big offensive line just starting to wear down that Army defensive line and linebackers are much smaller than the Notre Dame offensive line. It's starting to take its toll here in, in the midway in the fourth quarter. Third down and four call for Burline at the nine-yard line of Army. Allen Pinkett again, looks for the block, he cuts back in, he's inside the five to the four yard line of first down Notre Dame. Daryl Londo brought him down. So Allen Pinkett gets it to the four where it'll be first down and goal to go. An extra tight end coming in for Notre Dame, the freshman Andy Heck. Alice Pinkett just sets his blocks up so well. Looks like he's going to go to the outside. The blocker took the man to the outside. He cuts right back in. He's got such quick feet. He makes the right decision with that football. Two fullbacks now. Monahan and Stams both in. On a first and goal. Hand off to Monahan. Not much there. He stopped in his tracks at about the four-yard line. Monahan was brought down by Doug Pavick, the free safety, senior from Rosemont, Minnesota. It's a drive that was really mostly all running plays with Pinkett, just taking more time off the clock now inside the five-yard line with only 7.21 left to go in the game. Very difficult for Arms to try to come back. Cornell Taylor is coming at fullback, replacing Tom Monahan on a second down and goal to go. Erline rolls out, has a man wide open, he drops it, and he had no one hand, he had with Tom Raider. Raider was wide open, but Erline's pass was a little underthrown, brings up a third down and goal. And this is a play where, where number 90 was wide open, Raider was wide open, the low pass, all Burline has to do is just lob the football out in the corner of the end zone and let Raider walk underneath it. He tries to deliver the football a little bit low and, and behind Raider, and it went for the incomplete pass. Third down and goal to go for Notre Dame at the Army four-yard line. Here's a pitch back to Pinkett. Pinkett is stripped up on a good defensive play by Doug Pavick, the free safety. Pavick coming in from his free safety spot, tripping up Pinkett, and it's fourth down and goal, and Notre Dame will go for the field goal. John Carney will check in along with Sabu and Steve Leonardo, and the holder, Hal Von Wild. The Army is taking a lot of chances on defense, bringing that free safety, Doug Pavick, to try to make a big play in the back. We've got one arm on Pinkett. Usually does not bring Pinkett down, but he just was able to trip him up inside the five. 
This will be a 21-yard field goal attempt by John Carney. The ball is spotted, the boot is in the air, and it is good. 6.22 left to play. We have a timeout with the score, Notre Dame 24, Army 10. We'll be right back. For Army on a second down and seven call. Corey Crawford on the option play, pitches it back to Clarence Jones, and Mike Haywood came up and rocked him down at about the 27-yard line. Pickup of four by Clarence Jones. It'll bring out a third down and three. And this is the way a free safety can play the option. He's in charge of containment. Containment, he's coming down. Here's Crawford finally pitching it back to Jones. And Haywood, an open field, makes a body block on Jones, takes him out of bounds for about a two or three yard gain. Third down and three army. They have it at their own 27 yard line. Here's Black, and he gets the first down to the 31-yard line. Black, the ball carrier, stopped by Ron Weisenhofer, who lost his shoe in the process. First down, 10 for Army at their own 31. Black, 92 yards, 21 carries. And Army should have hustled right back in the huddle while the chains were being moved. They thought the clock would have been stopped. Now they wasted a few seconds here with 5.30 left to go. First and 10 Army at their own 31-yard line. Corey Crawford is really stacked up by Jeff Coons and Eric Dorsey. It was Coons first. The sophomore defensive tackle who's had a fine game, and then he was leveled by Eric Dorsey. Crawford was sandwiched between Coons from one side, Dorsey coming from the back side. He had no chance at all. Fortunately, he's not fumbled the football, but... This is why the triple option, a lot of teams have gone away from you. Cannot play catch-up football with this type of an offense. Almost have to put it in the air now. Second down and 13 at their own 29-yard line. Corey Crawford on a reverse to Spellman. He gets away from Figaro, but he can't elude Jeff Coons. Jeff Coons has had an outstanding game as a down lineman for Notre Dame. Sophomore from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, 6'6", 252. And a flag is down and a penalty on Army. Army has already won, run one reverse this afternoon for a positive yard. When you run it the second time, usually people are right there. Kuntz got penetration, comes right down the line of scrimmage and makes the play. And with penalty, I could not see the penalty flag. We'll have to wait for the official's call. The first penalty on Army this afternoon. Illegal block, apparently. Or a personal foul. It moves it back to the 11-yard line. Third down and 30. When you're running the triple option, it's going to be awfully difficult right here for Army. How about the lateral <laughs> movement by the 252-pound Coons on that play? back to throw. He gets it out. It is incomplete. It was intended for Spellman and depending on the play for Notre Dame was Pat Bally. So it's a fourth down and Army will kick it away with 4.34 left to play and Notre Dame leading 24 to 10. Troy Wilson will drop back in solo safety for Notre Dame. Harold Rambush will do the putting for Army, a freshman from Albany, Georgia. After five straight completed passes, four straight incomplete passes by Corey Crawford of Army. Not a long punt. And it will roll dead in Army territory at the 48-yard line where Notre Dame will take over. 37-yard punt with the roll by Rambler. The score is Notre Dame 24, Army 10. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium in just a moment. Where you want to be. Back at Notre Dame Stadium, first and 10 Notre Dame on the Army 48. The second unit in there now for Notre Dame. Terry Andrzak is the quarterback, a sophomore from Allen Park, Michigan. Inside handoff, Monahan. Monahan goes down to about the 45-yard line before he is brought down. Spotted on the 44, a pickup of around three. It'll be second down and seven. Burnell Taylor checking in a fullback for Monahan. 
Pete Rokic is in on the offensive line for Notre Dame, along with Tom Riley. Wide outs are Tony Eason and Mark Green. Andrew Zach, the quarterback. On a second down and seven call, hands off to Hiawatha Francisco. Makes a huge move and gets down to about the Army 39-yard line before he's driven out of bounds. That's got a bounce by Doug Pavick, the senior free safety. And the Army defense right now is going to take a lot of chances, blitz people, bring the free safety or Pavick, try to make something, make it, uh, a turnover possibly for Notre Dame to try to get his football back. And all Notre Dame is going to do right now is just work on the clock and run the football. Third down and two, Notre Dame. Andrew Zach pitches back to Hiawatha Francisco. Cuts it back in. Francisco to the 30-yard line of Army where it'll be first down, Notre Dame. Doug Pavick finally brought Hiawatha Francisco to earth. Francisco was the Ohio Player of the Year playing for Cincinnati Moeller under Jerry Faust. And Doug Pavick, the free safety, made another tackle for Army. If you're playing that free safety position, you shouldn't lead the team in tackles. And right now this afternoon, he has made a lot of plays in open field. First and 10 Notre Dame at the Army 30-yard line. And Rizak, the quarterback, a sophomore. Here's High Hiawatha Francisco again inside the 25 to the 22-yard line. Good running by Francisco. Reggie Fullwood the tackle. From Notre Dame Stadium, Notre Dame, Indiana. Harry Callis along with Jack Ham with 2.46 left to play in the game. Notre Dame leading Army by a score of 24 to 10. And Hiawatha Francisco doesn't get that many chances to carry the football with Allen Pickett in that lineup, so he's making the most of his opportunities here late in the football game. Francisco, a junior, he played in the defensive secondary last year. Monahan hurdles for a few yards. Tom Monahan, senior fullback, he was a walk-on. His dad, Tim, played at Notre Dame. Comes out of Arcola, Illinois. He got the first down. It's first and 10 Notre Dame at the Army 18-yard line. Over the ball comes Chuck Lanz as a junior from Germantown, Tennessee. On a first down at 10 Notre Dame at the 18-yard line. Hiawatha Francisco breaks a couple of tackles and gets down to about the 13-yard line. A pickup of around five by him. Larry Biggins making the tackle. Notre Dame just eating out the clock. 150 and counting in the Irish lead army by a score of 24 to 10. I think it really is the case, Harry, with the team just wore down this army defense. Notre Dame's offensive line much bigger and much stronger. And in the fourth quarter, they've gotten a lot of yards rushing, both by Pinkett and now Francisco. Francisco, 29 yards on five carries. Here's Hiawatha Francisco again. Gets the block, going wide, down to the 10-yard line. Francisco, the ball carrier, was stopped at the 10-yard line. It'll bring up a third down and one. One oh five and counting left to play. Notre Dame with the ball on the Army 10-yard line. Army coming in 5-0. and oh. They'll go 5-1 and one. And for Notre Dame in an almost must-win situation. The Irish will go 2-3 and three and will look forward to USC next week for Notre Dame. Hiawatha Francisco. He is still on his feet and gets down to around the 7-yard line. Before he's swarmed under... By cadet tacklers and Hiawatha Francisco, some hard running. Jerry Faust was really kind of worried how his team was going to play after that two-week layoff, especially the loss at Air Force. He wasn't—he wanted to play last week because he wanted to get a, get rid of that loss or the memory of it. But his team has come out here and played a complete football game and really taken it to the Army cadets. Tom McHugh in for Notre Dame for Tom Freeman. This is Francisco again to the four-yard line with 20 seconds left to play, and Notre Dame will probably just let the clock run out. 
Notre Dame will go two and three, and for the Black Knights of the Hudson, their first loss of the year after going five and oh. Notre Dame came in as favored by six points, and a convincing win over Army this afternoon. For Jim Young, his first loss of the year. For Jerry Faust, a win that he really had to have, and he got it convincingly by a score of 24 to 10. Jerry Faust, very happy with his win this afternoon at Notre Dame Stadium over the cadets of West Point. There has been a lot of pressure on Jerry Faust, but his team really responded this week. They just came in and played very well. He had two weeks of very tough, hard, physical practice for the team, and they have responded this afternoon by playing one complete football game. That's the end of the game, and the final score is Notre Dame 24. Army team is brought to you by City Bank, a city corp company. By Mitsubishi Motors. Mitsubishi takes you where